I'm Kayvon Golustane, and uh, this is another Conscious Health Institute interview. And I'm honored to be interviewing today Dr. Paul Rabinow, who's Professor of Anthropology at University of California at Berkeley. Paul, welcome. Thank you. So, anthropology. What's anthropology? I think anthropology is two basic things. Now I would say at this point in my life that anthropology is something about the logos of anthropos. That is to say the science or the discourse or the truths or the knowledge production about anthropos. Anthropos is uh, in Greek is the human thing. And there have been many figures and variations and of the understanding of what anthropos is um, and Anthropology, in its biggest sense, is the attempt in some more, more or less rigorous fashion to understand both what Anthropos is, what it could be, what it has been, etc. So that's one side of it. The other side of it is, like many other people, I became an anthropologist as a young man, first to get out of the academy, second to get out of America, and third to have ex existential experience of living with uh, other people um, and it produces a kind of both a kind of knowledge that disciplines like sociology or political science often don't have but also it changes you and so anthropology for me is also a process of existential change um, which gives or should give uh, a particular taste or coloration or richness to uh, to how we think and write. Now that's a, of course an ideal and mm -hmm. not everyone measures up, but uh, there, it's still the I think the most renegade and in, embedded and engaged discipline in, in, the, in the university, um, which I'm not always saying very much because the university is a pretty disastrous place, but the um, but anthropology is still broader and more open and people have to go out and do something, mm -hmm. expose themselves to, to, to something which, which almost none of the other disciplines do. Did you grow up in, were you exposed to other cultures? I grew up in, groups? in Queens in New York City in a neighborhood called Sunnyside. Same here, Elmhurst. There you go. <laughs> uh, Sunnyside was a garden city. Uh -huh. And when I was growing up, was a, um, a socialist communist zone. I see. Um, my parents were both social workers of mm -hmm. one sort or another, um, Jewish, but not religious. Mm -hmm. And so I was raised to believe that uh, that the world was a dangerous place, that America was the best place for a Jew to be, but not safe. Uh -huh that New York was sort of an island of, of sanity in an otherwise rather crazy country. And my father had been in the army in the Second World War, and they had been obliged to live in Kansas and Florida and North Carolina, which were virulently racist and, and anti-Semitic. Um, so I was raised as someone who was a Jew, was an American, but not quite comfortable with uh, or fully identified with with either of those. I had developed an attachment to France very early on, to Paris, but France more broadly. When you say early on, are you talking about as a child or as a teenager? Or well, teenager. As a teenager, I yeah. see. Were you aware of um, this distance you had to the others around you when you were young. Yes. Okay. And did you have brothers or sisters? I have a sister. You have a sister. She was okay. the hippie. I was the angry young man academic. I see. I see. And so okay. she was a midwife for many, many years. Now she then she became a nurse because she got tired of getting in Santa Fe of getting up in the middle of the night and the cold and the rain and the snow. So she she's a nurse in a hospital now. So is it fair to say that you got interested in anthropology somewhat as an intellectual activity 
and not just because you were interested in other cultures? Uh, that's right. Okay. Um, okay. Also... Not that you're not, but no, it I, seems like I have this feeling right. that that came for, yeah. Also, I mean, another way of saying it is, in, in Europe, I'm a philosopher. Yeah. So I've taught philosophy in Paris uh, a number of times and in Germany. And uh, I'm interested and always have been interested in, in a certain kind of philosophic question and approach, but not the way the Americans and the Brits do it. So when I went, I went to... Um, Stuyvesant High School, which was a math and science high school, and then the University of Chicago, which was the formative intellectual experience in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I was always interested in philosophy, but I didn't want to, as I said, I didn't want to spend my whole life in, in the academy and the library. So anthropology, particularly then, but still in a way today, in particular at Chicago, was a philosophically oriented discipline, but very fieldwork oriented also. Mm -hmm. So the combination of being able to think about big questions, but via actual experience in the world, mm -hmm. um, and also a sense that the world was not the United States, uh, not reducible to the United States, which of course I accepted from very early on, but this was a way of learning about multiple civilizations and other cultures and... and now, it's interesting you mentioned France. Now, one yeah. of the things that I feel about anthropology is, is that it does look at a lot of different subjects that have to do with human beings, right. different areas of life. Right. And what attracted me to anthropology was what I considered to be its cross-disciplinary Mm -hmm. Even though it's a discipline, it gets into everything. Sure. The French tradition seems to be that you can, and in fact you must, talk about other subjects besides your own. Mm -hmm. Is that, are you attracted to the French tradition, intellectual environment because of its uh, ability to cross into other subjects? Well, there's a dual answer to that, which, I mean, the full answer okay. would be would take a long time. But the, well, the simple sure. answer is something like French anthropology itself uh -huh. is very ultimately intellectualist. So it it's capable of integrating everything into its schemas. Yeah. And there's some very brilliant anthropologists in France. And I did study with uh, Claude Lévi-Strauss mm -hmm. and Louis Dumont, among others, and they're... Levi Strauss, in, in particular, is also an incredibly good writer in French. Mm -hmm. So there's sort of a, a aesthetic quality to it as well. But the part of thing, the, the real stuff that interested me in France was more the philosophers, and both the political engagement, the anti-colonialism, mm -hmm. the broad critique of European civilization, and attempts to figure out how power and knowledge work together, or in some in a complex uh, fashion, rather than um, the anthropologists per se, and that's still true uh, today.